Stella Roman, who actually one of my favorite singers, and I don't think she's remembered at all today. She sang her only two Mimis of her career. She was hired, I think, by the Met when, right when the war was breaking out because they were losing their Italian dramatic Verdi sopranos. Poncello had retired before the war, and then I think uh, people like Chinia went back to Italy, and Milano had just been signed, and Stella Roman basically sang the Verdi repertoire, and the only Puccini she sang, and she was absolutely superb in Puccini. Years later, when I got to know her, she said, they typed me as a Verdi soprano, and she said, I came to the Met wanting to sing Puccini, and these two performances of Mimi and Only One Butterfly, One Man on Let's Go, were the only Puccini performances she sang in her entire career at the Met. Otherwise, it was Trovatore Aida, um, Gioconda, all, all that heavy repertoire. <laughs> She never had the audience admiration that Milanov had, that Albanese had, Sayao. But I think that with her, I would forgive her everything just for the last act of Trovatore. She had a funny habit. The middle voice wasn't exactly the line or whatever you want to call it. It wasn't always a pleasant sound. She sort of, I don't know, she wasn't really a favor of the audience, basically, because a lot of the repertoire lies in the middle voice. It didn't bother me. Well, first of all, as a very good friend of mine who was a subscriber said, it doesn't bother you because you're not paying, you're getting paid to listen to her. But it was, it was kind of hard for the Met audience. But she had the most beautiful piano I think I've ever heard in my life. The way she sang the other Salci and the Alba Maria it was incredible.
Roman was a very different Jaconda than Milanov. Milanov sort of owned the role. This was before she left the Met and came back when Bing brought her back. But those Jacondas that I heard were all Milanov and Roman once in a while. But they were entirely different. I can't explain how. Uh, the voices were entirely different too. But um, as the years go on, I keep on thinking of Stella Roman, who had no, <laughs> she had no public, which was so sad. And I remember she and Licha Albanese were actually best friends. Licha and she used to cook big pots of spaghetti for the GIs that used to come to the apartment in some evenings from the USO. And the strange part of it is Roman who sang Aida in those days would much rather have sung Butterfly and, and Bohemian. And Licha always wanted, I found this out some years later, Licha always had a passion to sing Stella Roman's repertoire, most especially Aida. Licha always thought that Aida was written for her voice. But Stella Roman, she came with a big reputation. She actually was in the first Italian, the premiere of Strauss's Frauna Schott in Italy. She was the empress. She wasn't Italian. She wasn't Yugoslav. When she came to this country, she actually never went back. She settled with a career at the Met, and then later on, uh, when uh, 1950, she lived in California for many, many years and then came back to New York. So this was the country of a choice. It's just too bad that she didn't have the audience that Milanov had, that Albanese had, that Sayal had. She might be remembered by some who never heard her, but one of the few people today that really loved the things she did, like The Last Act of Othello, the only time I ever got that feeling was when I first heard Tobaldi do it in 55. That was a debut, and at the dress rehearsal was a final dress. First time I heard her, I got the same feeling, a different kind of voice, but it was the ethereal quality of her singing in the last act that brought back the memory of Stella Roman. And even though Milanov was noted, Milanov, people waited for a piano. She had an incredible piano, and they both sang the Trovatore many times, uh, Milanov more than Roman. There was something about Roman's piano that was breathtaking, and the audience finally recognized it with their applause. Friends of mine who were not great fans always said it took her three acts to warm up, but that's not, that's very unfair. And I remember, I shouldn't say this, but I was living at my parents, and in those days, immigrants read the daily news because of the pictures, and they had a column that I used to read called Voice of the People, and it was right after broadcast of Aida, and someone had written that they heard this, they didn't mention her name, the soprano that sang Aida last week at the Med broadcast, he said, my dog howls better than she sings. It was a terrible thing, and I knew it was still a Roman. So it, it, it was very sad. She didn't make commercial recordings as such. I do have a Met broadcast with Martinelli and Tibbet of her Desdemona, which is absolutely wonderful, but that's even before 1943. And then I got a Bala Mosca, not with the greatest sound, and I do have a Jaconda too. Unfortunately, none of those are really an even decent sound. 
So it's hard to play for someone and say, now this is a special singer of that period because it's not fair to her either. But she was an amateur painter, a very good one. She lived in New York until she died. She lived in San Francisco for years and she sang at the San Francisco Opera, but, but after her marriage broke up and she wasn't singing any place, she came back to New York and had a very sad ending, unfortunately.